Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Scorpio New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 initiative coordination group. We continue our work focusing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And today I'll focus on goal 15. And before we open our work today, uh, I want to say that today we will use uh, somewhat different format for our work after our initial uh, alignment. We will have a short sharing of the focalizing triangle. And today it will be Maria Cristina Donadieu from Arizona, Rose Bates from the United States, from everywhere in the United States, and from Christine Thomas from Australia. And uh, then we will have meditation. And after meditation, we will share, have a group sharing where we welcome everyone to contribute. And now I invite Rebecca Hood to introduce the goal of our work. Thank you, Alexander. So we gather once a month at the new moon to focus on a shared vision for the common good that is expressed through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We participate in group meditation on these formulated thought forms of solution, which are the SDGs that address the issues facing humanity and the planet at this time. These SDG thought forms help create physical conditions leading to transformation and elevation of human consciousness. Through this meditation, we energize and magnetize the vision to be radiatory and to reach as many people as possible in order that the sustainable development goals might manifest through many actions. We use the opportunity of the new moon cycles and available ast astrological energies to distribute, radiate and anchor intention on the physical plane. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. This is Dot, and we are going to, as Alexander shared, uh, try a bit of an experiment and do a naming circle with all of us today as we focus on life on land. And as we now are going to unite our hearts across distance through offering our voice into the circle, saying our name and where we are calling in from, just want to say that Teilhard de Chardin said, love alone is capable of uniting living beings in such a way as to complete and fulfill them. For love alone takes them and joins them by what is deepest in themselves. All we need is to imagine our ability to live, developing till it embraces the totality of humanity and the earth. So we will begin with staff. If you click on attendees in the GoToWebinar control, you'll see two, two squares. One says attendees and one says we will begin with staff, name, and where you are calling in from, please. Hi, this is Chris, and I'm calling in from Lane on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. 
Hello, I'm Daniela. I'm calling in from Brussels, Belgium. Dot neighbor, Walpole, New Hampshire, United States. Maria Cristina Donadieu, Arizona, United States. Rose Bates, I'm calling currently from Grass Valley, California. Rebecca Hood, I'm calling from Mapleton on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. I'm Antony, I'm calling in from South Africa, Limpopo District. So if you choose, as, as we're following the attendees now, thank you, Antoinette. And we see listed a point of light and a net. If either of you would care to share name and where you're calling in from, and we will continue to move on. My name is Annette, and I'm calling from Denmark, Europe. Avon, will you check in? Avon has muted uh, microphone, so Avon, if you can unmute yourself. Oh dear. And if we have any problems with microphones, let's just continue this sharing of the names. Whoever is the next on the list. Mm -hmm. Okay, Barbara is next. And if you don't want wish to share, that's fine too. So perhaps we could just Bernard. share the names. Perhaps you could just name everyone. Well, we'd like to get everyone's voice in, but Aiden Madison, Barbara Darden. Bernard, uh, there, there are several people who muted themselves, so please unmute. Try to unmute yourself. So I Bob and Marlon, if you would unmute and your name and where you're calling in from. Go ahead. Bob and Marilyn C. Hovec. Cheryl, if you would add your name and where you're calling in from. Please unmute, mm -hmm. Cheryl. Cheryl Benzin, Christine, yeah. Ellen from Colorado, USA. Thank you. Elisa from Brazil. Darcy. Thank you, Darcy Sessions, Dwayne. Martha Gallagher from Weehawken, New Jersey, U.S. Dwayne Carpenter from Grass Valley, California. Gillian Douglas, Helen, 
Helen Kearns, uh, Colorado, USA. John Horan, Washington, D.C., the United States. Joke? Yolaine? Josette? Marilyn? Yeah. Ah, Josette, good. Will you tell us yeah. where you're calling in from? Hello, Josette, uh, from French, near Strasbourg. Thank you. Marilyn? It's Marilyn Svihovec in Colorado. Thank you, Martha. Richard? I hear Richard speaking, but he's not coming through. Pat, he's muted. I'm not sure. Okay, from the Sunshine Coast, Australia. Sheldon? Sheldon Hughes from Penn Valley, California. And Tracy. Can you hear? <laughs> yes, yes, we can. Tracy Arbor. Oh, Tracy so, from uh, Nova, Michigan. Thank you. Over to Rebecca. Thank you, Dot. Ah, it's actually over to Maria Christina um, to, to bring us into alignment now. So over to you, Maria Christina. Thank you. Are we having slides? Alexander, is the slide from the Scorpio New Moon available? Thank you. It's a joy to be here with you all and welcoming at this time of this month's New Moon work of Scorpio. Scorpio signaling the time of the lower interlude. <laughs> this annual cycle of the higher interlude and the lower interlude may be experienced monthly in the cycle of the new moon and the full moon. And in these observances, we come more fully into the cyclic rhythm of the soul itself. Oh, go ahead and forward slides, Alexander. There we go. Moving right along on the slides. Or not. So if you and that we use here with the Tucson unit of service. And we start, start very foundationally with balanced on the sitting bones, the literal bones of our skeletal body at that point where they need gravity. Because when balanced on the sitting bones, the spinal column is freed up. The weight is no longer on that little bottom bone and it can drop and the torso opens as we breathe through, relaxing the muscles and balance through the neck. And as those neck muscles are released, the head, the skeleton, the skull tends to tip forward as those muscles soften and the jaw softens. And we come on through to a point between the eyebrows, softening the eyes, muscles and the forehead and coming to a point of creative tension within the Ajna center, this directing center 
And it is from here that we can direct the light through the realm of the physical etheric. Purifying, healing, strengthening. The consciousness itself between the eyebrows, seated upon the lotus, directing the light through the realm of the emotional astral, watery fluidic planes, stilling the waters and the undertoes, tsunamis or little whirlpools coming to a rest so that we are capable of more perfectly and beautifully reflecting higher booty, love wisdom, and a sense of joy. The consciousness itself centered between the eyebrows within that chakra, that scintillating wheel and directing the light through the realm of the lower concrete mind, the realm of the monkey mind, form building, mercurial, stealing that mercurial substance, holding it alert, but receptive, capable of fresh impression. The consciousness itself between the eyebrows, within that brilliance, within that brilliance, we look into that light, through and beyond to a greater above the head. The thousand petaled lotus, Ramarandra, the crown center, the very heart within the head, itself a portal into the higher realm of mind, into the realm of the abstract mind. The egoic lotus, the solar angel, the realm of the soul itself on its own plane, a group conscious entity. And it is here as a group, a soul group, that we begin our work, fully mindful of humanity and its need, recognizing ourselves to be part of that worldwide group, working to externalize and ground the emerging energies, energies accessed at the time of the higher interlude, and focus seen within the depths of our daily world through the days of Scorpio. We bring our group focus to create and sustain those building lighted thought forms of solution. For without vision, the people perish. continues to focus on the global vision agreed to by the member states of the United Nations, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And today we will focus on the 15th goal to promote, restore, sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, Sustainably manage forests, combat desertification, halt and reverse land degradation, and halt biodiversity loss, life on land. The Tibetan mentions the three Buddhas of activity in relation to the three lower kingdoms. Focused within the council chamber of Shambhala, they are said to extend their aura through each of the three lower kingdoms. Mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, and the animal kingdom, respectively. And we are forming a critical link between these inner worlds and our daily world. Through this bridging work, through the group of the new group of world servers, we become stewards of the earth. 
After seven years in Aries, Uranus is now entering the constellation of Taurus. And the constellation that rules a new group of world servers. This may give added impetus to that emerging new paradigm of our Earth stewardship. Stimulating innovation through the auspices of the new group of world servers. And so we continue focusing on goal number 15. And I hand it over to slideshows. Hmm. To Alex. Thank you, Maria Cristina. And we continue our work today with the stimulus leading us to preparing for meditation. And I invite Chris from Australia to join the sharing. Uh, Chris, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Sasha. There's been an increasing global interest in accounting for different knowledge frameworks in the sustainable management of natural resources. This includes uh, research to integrate different branches of Western science. From the perspective of environmental management or natural resource management, counterbalancing Western viewpoints with the ecological knowledge of the indigenous people will result in a more resilient ecological system through the incorporation of a broader information base. Before the arrival of British colonisers in 1788, Australia was inhabited by indigenous people. Indigenous people inhabited the whole of Australia and Torres Strait Islanders live, lived on the islands between Australia and Papua New Guinea in what is called the Torres Strait Islands. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are often spoken about together and referred to as the First Nations um, people or Indigenous people, First Australians or Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, they're often clumped together. However, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders have very distinct cultural groups and a very distinct cultural systems. For Aboriginal people, the relationship is to the land and centres around the land. And for the Torres Strait Islanders, it is centred around the waterways. For Aboriginal people, there are over 500 different clan groups or nations across the continent, as you'll see on the map on your screen. And Alex, if you could just go to the second one. These tribal groups are very distinct and have unique characteristics which define them. I'm not able to share all of the details of this with you today, um, but it is important to honour the diversity that exists across these tribal groups. And I would like to say that I do not speak on behalf of Aboriginal Australia. I have been gifted in this incarnation into a deeply rich culture and as an Aboriginal woman I speak only from my own knowledge and experiences and hope that it's of some assistance in gaining an understanding of the importance of life on land for Aboriginal people of Australia and you'll see that I've marked out the tribal group of which um, I am uh, a descendant of is the Waka Waka people on the southeast coast of Queensland there and when you look at that compared to the greater map you can see the richness that exists. So land is of great significance to the Aboriginal people. And Alex, if you could just click on the next slide, that would be wonderful. And this um, image is probably very familiar to most people. Um, this is Uluru, which uh, is in um, Central Australia and is often referred to as the heart centre. Um, it has great significance to Aboriginal people um, and in particular the Anangu people of Central Australia. So I just thought it would be a nice image um, and a nice association to have up while I speak a little bit about the relationship to land just in its symbology of the heart centre of Australia. 
So for Aboriginal Australians, there is a profound spiritual connection to the land, the waterways and all life. The living environment goes beyond physical elements and is fundamental to identity. Aboriginal law, and we spell that L-O-R-E, uh, and spirituality are intertwined with the land, people and creation. Understandings of land and water is living cultural knowledge that is passed down from generation to generation, forming a rich and significant matrix of people, totemic, social, economic and spiritual connectedness with country. The connectedness extends from the past, shapes both present and the future. It is often referred to as the dreaming. It is all that has been, all that is, and all that will be. Traditionally, Indigenous people relied on an intimate knowledge of seasonal patterns involving knowledge of the weather, seasonal cycles of plants and animals and their links with Indigenous culture and land uses to secure an ongoing supply of food, medicine, and other resources. They interpreted the stars, the weather, other phys physical and biological indicators to predict biological events and signal when to pursue cultural activities. For example, in southeast Queensland, string like processions of hairy caterpillars predict the clustering of breeding mullet, a fish in the waterways. The presence of certain flowers indicate the time for fishing of crabs in other waterways. Traditional fire management practices stimulate new growth for preferred animal species and increase the abundance of favoured bush medicine and bush tucker plants. And when collated over an annual cycle, this type of information forms the basis of indigenous ecological calendars, which underpin and are strongly placed with the ecology of a particular place and therefore connection to the tribal group or the custodians of that country. Aboriginal people have developed systems of knowledge and understanding of their ecology, which is represented in a symbiotic relationship with the land and the waterways of their traditional homelands or country. This knowledge incorporating biodiversity, climate, land, culture and people have established a shared living culture with the environment since the dreaming. First Australians country encompasses an interdependent relationship between an individual and their ancestral lands and seas. The interdependence between Aboriginal people and land is based on respect and living in right relationship with all life. While the land sustains and pro provides for the people, the people manage and sustain the land through culture and ceremony. Every person is entrusted with cultural knowledge and responsibility to care for the land as they identify through their kinship or tribal group systems. Rather than owning land, people develop strong intimate knowledge of and connection to a place that is related to them. Caring for country is an intrinsic responsibility of all Aboriginal people. And caring for country means participating in activities on the land and seas with the objective of promoting ecological, spiritual and human health. It is a community driven movement towards long term social, cultural, physical and sustainability. Resources are shared and only what is needed is taken. It is understood that all resources are available for all. As one moves into stages of responsibility, they are given knowledge. This knowledge um, encompasses all of these things. There is a rich tradition of storytelling and from a young age, children are taught through story. They are given stories about the creation of the world around them, how the constellations in the sky were formed and the song lines about great trips across the country. In the world around them, these are the stories and legends, but they also incorporate the knowledge of the seasons and an ability to read the landscape and the weather. There is a ri very rich creative life and stories told by parents and grandparents are often translated into artwork using symbols or through traditional song, song lines and dance. 
all of which are often expressing the importance of the relationship to country. Wherever Aboriginal people gather, there is a welcome to country or an acknowledgement of country. It is part of identity and identifying ourselves to land and the connection and responsibility that goes with that. A welcome to country is undertaken by those who have direct custodianship of the country on which the meeting is being held, determined by the tri tribal groups. An acknowledgement of country is undertaken by any other person. Both of these things are about the ongoing relationship to the land, water, community and all life. And it is about recognising the wisdom tradition that exists for Aboriginal people. By way of, um, so as I mentioned before, the system is embedded in the notion of interrelationship, interconnectedness and interdependence, defining responsibilities within those relationships and handed down since the beginning of time. By way of moving into our meditation today, and um, we'll also hear from Rose in a moment, I'd like to offer an acknowledgement of country which draws on and um, the wisdom of our old people. So, I would like to acknowledge the old people who've gone before us, the wise ones who guide us today, and those young people who are emerging and leading us into the future. I would like to acknowledge the custodianship that we all hold of our Mother Earth. May we grow in our understanding of and draw on the spiritual and cultural connections of the First Nations people of this earth, respecting the value of the land and all life. May we see ourselves in each other and see the oneness of our humanity and our interconnection with one another and all life, including the land. May we always operate from the heart. So Alexander, if you could just click to the next slide. This um, is a uh, piece of art that I've done recently and gifted to one of our co-workers. Um, and I thought it was just uh, helpful to share um, some of the symbology um, used often in dot work, circles often representing gathering places. So I thought this might be a nice one to share as we all gather to contemplate this uh, SDG, Life on Land. And we come together around the central fireplace or gathering place um, from different parts, we're all connected. So Rose, I'll hand it over to you. Very nice, uh, Chris. Very nice, Christina. Um, I would just like to add to the stimulus thought form um, some of the points to consider that you just shared with the difference in understanding and relationship to the environment and to your purposes for incarnation, what it means to be on earth, what animals play, what the environment plays, what the vegetable kingdom plays. In contrast, a lot of the First Nation cultures with our current culture, and especially in the West and in the East of kind of this mass rush for immediacy. Everything, we live in a culture where everything is about the now and not so much about the future or about our next environment for our next incarnation. It's, it's about right now and comparing that to the, um, our ancestral relationship to environment and how we lived in a very different um, shift in consciousness. So that's what I just want to bring to that um, segment of stimulation. over to you, Maria Christina. Thank you, Rose. So um, were you there going we go. to 
lead the meditation, Rose. Mm -hmm. I just, that was very beautiful. Thank you, Chris. I will just add that, that grounding, very grounding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, this is Scott. Thank you, everyone. Just those, before we go into the meditation, just a gentle reminder to all of us on the call that we are utilizing a, a slightly different format today, uh, which we are trusting will bring us even closer together in terms of our unified field and as we build these forms together and through our meditative practice. So please, after the meditation, uh, we will be invited then to have a dialogue, to have sharing. So we will not be signing off immediately after the meditation. So the meditation is the um, strengthening of the hands of the new Rupa world servers, the new moon meditation. And as we unify with the soul of humanity, as a part of our group fusion, we were, we were reminded of the phrase, the mantra, I am one with my group brothers and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. We recognize our place as a group within the heart center of the group of world servers. We mentally extend a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy, the planetary heart center, to the Christ, the heart of love within the hierarchy, and towards Shambhala, where the will of God is known. As we make this alignment, we bring the soul of all humanity with us in our consciousness. As we hold our mind focused for a few moments on the planetary role of the group of world servers, meditating between the hierarchy and humanity, responding to hierarchical impression and meditating the plan into existence, we reflect on the seed thought of life on land. We reflect on protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems. Sustainably manage forests. Combat desertification and halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. It is through the impression and expression of certain great ideas that humanity must be brought to the understanding of the fundamental ideals which will govern the new age. This is the major task of the group of world servers.
we visualize the precipitation of the will to good, essential love throughout the planet from Shambhala, through the planetary heart, the hierarchy, through the Christ, through the group of world servers, through all men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world, and finally, through the hearts and minds of the whole human family. We consider the many ways in which the power of the one life and the love of the one soul are working out in the world through members of the group of world servers. So building the thought form of solution to world problems. Holding this point of tension, we will sound the great invocation, visualizing it irradiating human consciousness with light, love, and power. We'll also pause between each stanza. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, Rose. And so, as Dot mentioned, um, we would like to invite everyone in to discuss some of these ideas that and any that have been presented today, and any other ideas that um, 
you may want to add to to the thought form building and the gathering of the thought forms around this goal. Um, and our, our naming circle at the beginning was was um, an attempt to try and make it a little easier to um, feel that um, everyone could add your voice in. But please, um, we, we really invite your participation. Um, and as you come back in from the meditation, just gathering together any thoughts that might have been triggered um, through, throughout the um, discussions and the stimulus this morning, this afternoon, this evening. Um, so the floor is open. Please raise your hand. Um, click on the raise your hand icon um, if you would like to share. We would love to hear from you. Also, you can use the question section of the control panel to share your impressions in writing, and we will read it for you. But it's always good to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. I see that Martha and Christine both have their hands raised, Alexander. Oh, Martha, go ahead. I was just going to suggest that we put up the, the actual sustainable development goal on the screen, keep it in mind, focused on it. Thank you. Have the full text. I will do it in a second, yes. Thank you for allowing me to um, participate in this wonderful presentation. Um, I was moved by um, the recognition of the wisdom of the Aboriginal people that was discussed and um, the difference in tone between that um, and the way the negotiations are taking place at the United Nations to And I thought how powerful the artwork was to um, visualize how intricate and how complex the actual negotiations are <clears throat> in uh, shifting our attention away from, from uh, seeing the earth as a thing and much more toward seeing the earth as a being of which we are only a small part. So at this time of Scorpio where in many ways we're invited to be warriors and um, addressers, I thought of the power of our voices simply to tell the story of that sector of humanity that knows what is needed. Um, it reminded me of a uh, time last week I had a chance to participate in a fire ceremony with the Ojibwe people um, in Canada. And I spoke to um, a woman who became my guide during the ceremony. She invited me. Um, I told her that um, I would. I always came to these uh, services, these rituals, with a sense of an apology for <clears throat> the blindness of the people from whom I came from. And she said to me that the important thing now is to remember the goodness, remember the land, remember the vitality of the land. Remember the power of the worm to separate what we need from what we don't need and to give back a, a healthy soil. She said that if we could remember 
who we really were, a lot of the problems that we deal with would disappear. So I want, I want to uh, just affirm that <clears throat> when I go back and talk about <laughs> the World Bank granting loans to Bangladesh to conserve its soil or to try to um, uphold some of the growth in laws against poaching and a host of other of the legal um, stances that are necessary to be taken but don't represent the core of what the consciousness shift uh, requires as is stated in these meditations I'll remember what was offered uh, about the Aboriginal people. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Martha. And I think, um, you know, to highlight back on your comments, it, it comes to consciousness. It comes to what what are our values, and humanity goes through it seems like cycles of what is important. And we're really coming now to a cycle where we're going back. I think because of the swinging of the pendulum so far in this direction of the destruction that we are seeing so quickly uh, when with the um, the unification of of the country of the world of all the countries and nothing we're no longer isolated what happens in one place doesn't affect someone else on the other side of the planet and um so i do see a a shift in consciousness so i'm i am optimistic that as the problem goes far one direction we swing back the other direction is starting to become um, really in the forefront and our values will be readjusted as they have to be. Christine's hand, Christine Moore's hand is up as well. Well, yes, I actually feel that this was a divine gift today because this is the universal new Earth Day, 11, 11, 11. There is no better time to realize our responsibility to the Earth because the coming of the Divine Feminine also brings a new maleness to Earth. We need to work together. Now, I have looked at these statistics. I guess we could consider that the illicit poaching is done by the male. We must bring these things to the forefront. We must speak out. Vegetation is being lost. So I say to my brothers and sisters in Grass Valley, California, you must find the reasons for the fires. I am someone who understands this from a different level because of my research. And these are not natural causes. People are being removed from their natural habitats. People are being displaced. This is criminal. If you don't understand what I'm saying, please pray on this. We are in a new cycle. The darkness is coming up for us to look at. If the people are being called into the cities, and this is a United Nations 2030 goal. I must protest. Thank you.
Uh, it's uh, Richard you. here from Australia. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you, Richard. Okay, yeah. okay, thank you. I just want to yes. thank everybody. Um, it's a wonderful thing that we do when we come together and bring our minds and hearts together to focus on these very important matters. I was reflecting and certainly looking at Christine's beautiful piece of art there and the um, it shows the interconnection of all things and what comes to mind is as above, so below, so within, so without. And I too carry a lot of hope. Um, we look back and to the First Nation peoples of all the globe, Asia, Europe, North, South, East and West. And um, in days gone by, there was a different type of thinking that wasn't so analytical. And so there was an interconnection and the feeling of oneness with nature and with the earth and with modern thinking um, and the analyticalness of our thinking abilities, we've separated off and uh, with that, I think we have um, the results of feeling separated. But I agree, the pendulum is swinging and more and more people are starting to feel the interconnections, not just with each other via beautiful webinars like this, but interconnections with all the kingdoms. And we are starting to really start to see scientists and researchers um, coming through with truths and understandings that reflect this interconnectedness. And I hold great hope that some of these cutting edge scientists and researchers are really starting to show the way to modern man how to resolve the issues that have been created out of this um, separative thinking. Uh, and it's happening also all around the globe. And through our people like ourselves coming together, creating the mental environment for these things to be shared, I think we're really producing and harboring, harboring a um, environment where such research and such knowledge will be able to come through and we actually will be able to see the restoration of the kingdoms of nature um, through a different way of thinking. So thank you. I'm recalling, it's Rebecca here, just recalling um, a, a comment of um, Mary Christina the other day when we met before the webinar and um, she spoke about um, this kind of new cutting edge idea that's coming into this um, work of um, relating to the needs of the land and what we do about the mess that we've got ourselves into. And I think you said um, it was the idea of um, rather than restoring what's what's been damaged, the damage is so great that we now have to think about a whole new approach and a whole new um, evolution really. And um, I think it's beautiful what's been said because it, it's really um, how do we bring this ancient knowledge and practices into a modern context and, and the discussion is really um, sort of centering around that a lot. How do we bring that consciousness into the United Nations? How does, how does how the scientists are linking back into that consciousness that we're all part of the earth and um, how we go forward with that. So um, it, it, just this idea that we're, we're coming into a new consciousness that integrates aspects of the old in a new format with new facets and ways of understanding. Yes, I could add to that. It is 
this is among environmental scientists and practitioners out in the field doing so much work of restorations where forests have burned or where there's been land degradation. There's been so much change, including of the climate, that it's no longer possible to restore the old. Where pine trees grew, you now must plant oaks. And so these folks literally were asking themselves, now that we're no longer just restoring, are we co-creating? I mean, we're playing, we, we, you know, they're literally article mentioned being like God, that I see it as a step forward in the process of owning our stewardship of the earth and being co-creators. It's a cutting edge conversation in the ecological environmental field. There's something called not just reforestation, but afforestation, where they're planting forests where they're never, they're not restoring a forest. There never was a forest there. Now a forest is being instantly planted. Hmm. It's fascinating. So we have um, two other hands that have been raised. We've got Gillian and then Sheldon. Uh, Gillian, Gillian, you unmuted. Gillian, if you would like to add something to the sharing, please, you unmuted. And Sheldon, you can unmute yourself whenever you feel like. I can add to the sharing. Um, yesterday there was a really uh, deep sharing at the World Goodwill Seminar uh, organized by Lucy's Trust uh, in New York. And uh, one of the presenters, um, I forgot her last name, his, uh, her name is Mary. Uh, she's in uh, from the Anthroposophy tradition and she's an astrologer. and. She shared uh, that uh, I think it's in Rudolf Steiner work that ages ago astrology was a way for humanity to listen to the stars. It's astro as stars and logi as the word. And then, then as the science was developing, astronomy came to replace astrology. So we started got more interested in the physical dimension of the celestial bodies. But eventually, we have to come to astrosophy, the wisdom of the stars, when we start talking back to the stars, not just listening, but start get engaged in the conversation, so to speak, with the stars. And I think it's very resonant with what we're talking here now. It's about establishing this flow of respectful communication and meaningful communication with the environment around us. I had one other thought about the, how, how the Aborigines relate to land ownership, which is that it doesn't exist. You, you relate to the land. You find land you relate to, as I understood, but you don't own the land. And that brought me back to the different ways of 
considering the economy, the word eco relates to the hearth, just as does the word ecology and how these two are so intimately related. As we're changing our ecological awareness, so too we're being forced to do so with our economic awareness, perhaps. I'd like to add to that that um, just like that uh, Aboriginal artwork was showing how um, that interconnectedness, that holistic um, perception of the world, just like Alexander was talking about, that went not just to the earth, but went to the stars. And we had great um, doctors of science and philosophy like Paracelsus, um, who was um, utilizing the teachings that came right back from ancient times out of um, Egypt and before, uh, where it was experienced that the land, mm -hmm. the stars, the waterways and everything were within ourselves. So to hurt the land was to hurt ourselves. And my understanding is that's exactly what the Aboriginal people were felt. Uh, felt. And so when they were traveling the lands, they were really were in guardianship of the lands and in that symbiotic relationship with nature and as Christine sort of said, would take what what only what was needed whilst giving back um, both energetically and, and otherwise. And my understanding is ancient China, South America, India, um, the old peoples, this was their perception of their relationship, not just to the lands, but to the universe. So there's a whole perception there which I think is shifting back via, and it's been recognized by cutting edge science, not necessarily institutionalized science yet, uh, but the cutting edge scientists and researchers. To add to, add to that, Richard, which I think is a, a really, really uh, important um, understanding, is where has kind of this shift come from? And you think of the, like the First Nations people; they they had an they had a sense of continuity. I think um, you know of the not just coming that the earth sustains you, but also that you and I, I that life continues and that the reincarnation I think plays a really important role in this. That many of these um, more eco responsible uh, cultures all had the sense of the future and future lives. So you, it was folly to even think that, you know, that wants to live for this life alone and then you just take in for what you, you want now because that idea, it was, you know, in the Egyptian culture and further and further back, it, it was just like common knowledge. So you would, it's like was second hand where you would just do it naturally because you have to live on this planet. You have to live in this environment you create for your future birth. So even from a selfish point of view, without the sense of global citizenship, that change alone, I think, has led to some of, um, you know, especially in our Western uh, culture where this idea of, you know, it's just about me and me right now and what happens after I die well my physical body dies it's like well you know that's not my concern so I think some of that consciousness change on a selfish level you know because now we think well well if it's not for me at least it'll be for my children and the future generations but I just think how much of that really has played a role in responsibility in in cultures past this is, this is Sheldon. I'd just like to add, add to this uh, marvelous uh, perspective that we have been now created for ourselves, a point of view all the way from the stars up and the stars back to us, and bring it down to Earth just for a moment and um, um, remind us that there are already um, on the ground some living examples of what this looks like. And I just think of one simple one happen to see on television 
program called Growing a Greener Earth. And they are, they are featuring a, a, um, a place called um, Spring Hill up in the northern Westchester County, which uh, some years ago was, was uh, designed to start, as the, the chef said, he opens the program saying, we don't ask what the farmer is preparing. We start with what the earth is giving us. And um, we shift there onto a discussion or some pr presentation by the person who's in charge of the, of, the, of the land, some 40 acres up there, and what, what they've been doing over the last number of years to, to um, recreate or allow the soil to rebuild itself. It take too long to, 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 uh, to describe what this, is, what this looks like. But it's a tremendously exciting experiment going on, and um, um, it just struck me that we 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 build out, as we say in the native traditions, and so on, from mm. from what the earth can tell us. And yes, we can maybe build some things uh, on the deserts, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Some some new things coming out of science. But I just want to say we we need to take note of what we see going on because some people have already got this in them, regardless of where it comes from, and they are living it out right now. So there is hope and there's also vision uh, that we can build on for for manifesting aspects of of these goals and for seeing them all the way through. Once they get picked, once they get picked up on Facebook, who knows where they're going to go. Um. Sheldon, that that um, you, what you're saying is picked up in one of the comments. There are a couple of comments in that I can see in chat here. Um, and Tracy says, on a positive note, permaculture is becoming implemented in many areas. And this system of agricultural and social design principles centered around simulating or directly utilizing the patterns and features observed in nature, working with nature through observation of plants, animals, and their functions, rather than treating any area as a single product system. This is moving forward in our Detroit area by thousands thousands of acres being treated in this respect. So that's another example on the ground of um, things happening, like you're saying, Sheldon. I also see a comment here from Gillian who um, is saying that she can't be heard. So um, sorry about that, Gillian. And, and what, she, what Gillian wants to say is that um, Christine's comment about operating from the heart appears to be so important and this isn't happening as much today as it needs to, it seems. The psychology of humanity needs to change to respect the earth and share its resources. Thank you, says Gillian. Mm. Rebecca, this is Dot. As you share that uh, from Gillian and Tracy and Sheldon building on what you were saying, you know, it seems we're in a position of framing right now resources. And one of the comments yesterday, as Alexander was sharing about the World Goodwill Seminar, really touched me that humanity tends to look at the mineral, uh, veg plant and vegetable and animal kingdoms as resources for humanity. And unless and until we learn to offer ourselves as one of the resources, and I would add spiritual resources on this planet, along with our brothers and sisters, so that we learn to live together in, in harmony, uh, we stand ever separate. And also that my biggest takeaway yesterday, Mary shared that disaster, the etymology of disaster is to be separate from the stars. That, I can't get that out of my consciousness. So it's, yeah, it really touches me, Sheldon, what you were saying. We're really reframing our position in all of this. And this group, I, I feel, does this every time we come together. So much gratitude. Thank you, Doc. Marvelous. Just adding on from um, what Tracy was saying there also um, about the permaculture and everything, we do have, the, you know, like our, again, our anthroposophical movement, um, 
of tried and true technology of the biodynamics and I was told some years ago the work that they were doing in Europe with the dying of the black forest and things like that they're rejuvenating it using biodynamic um, technologies and this sort of thing has been used quite widely now and getting more and more well known um, again using um, old science in a new way and I'm also aware of, of incredible research that's been done in Russia where they are reversing damage of, from radiation, ionic radiation, um, with, within the um, damage done to the genetics within crops and things. Um, there is proven um, technology that's come out using geometric shapes and things which are um, um, cancelling out, not blocking, but cancelling out um, a lot of harmful radiations from electromagnetic fields and things. So again, there is a lot of hope. We do have the the nous um, to be able to uh, reverse the destructive cycle that's that's come in. Um, and there's there's a lot of other examples too, but that's just a few that I'll throw in. Thank you very much, everyone, for this sharing. And we will continue this work, putting our spiritual resource into and magnetizing the sustainable development goals. Yesterday at this uh, seminar that we mentioned, by the way, the recording of this seminar is would be available on Lucy's Trust archive page. Uh, one of the presenters who works with the United Nations said that it's uh, asked about sustainable development goals, that uh, it's, uh, it's all other known and spoken factors of uniqueness of SDG. Uh, there is another phenomenon, so to speak about it, that uh, among many items that are on the UN agenda now, sustainable development goals somehow uh, getting much more attention than anything else. And it's becoming, in a way, a centerpiece of the United Nations. Uh, the way how the SDGs appeared and how they're progressing now through the international discourse agenda, it's a unique uh, and I think it's important for us to do what we're doing, putting our meditative focus on empowering the thought forms of the sustainable development goals that they would continue dominating, not just international discourse, but all the way through the social hierarchy to the uh, local groups and that this work would be happening on the ground. So, if anyone has any last comments I, before we will go to close out, please. Alexander, it's Chris here. I just thought um, it's really interesting and it's been a wonderful sharing of voices and um, uh, information, but <clears throat> how it's really interesting that as we um, explore this SDG around land, which is the, the foundation of all life and, you know, the most basic structure on earth, how we've reached up into the heavens. And it's just so symbolic um, that we are talking about that interrelationship between uh, the heavens and the earth in Scorpio as we um, you know, pierce through the glamour and um, look at how we 
focus our attention on our collective efforts and move away from separating out one's own interests to that sharing and um, you know as has been spoken and I mentioned you know around even shifting our thinking away from land as something to be owned um, but something to be in relationship with I just think that's a really lovely thing that we're doing today and I saw um, Avon's hand uh, go up I'm not sure if you were wanting to speak there Avon um if so please even you are muted on your end so please unmute yourself it's uh, on your control panel it's a little icon that's uh, with the microphone symbol it's red when you are muted and when you unmute yourself it will become green Yeah, it might be a bit challenging to locate it, but yeah, we still have a few minutes. If you could do that, that would be really wonderful to hear your voice. Alexander, while we wait for that, Annette has also raised her hand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, hi, this is Annette. Uh, I was thinking about um, what was said about the science, uh, it is uh, uh, the edge of the science becoming more uh, focused on the uh, synthesis and um, uh, more um, on the aesthetic uh, planes, uh, which is um, compared to the aesthetic body in the in the, in in in. Uh, where all is is uh, a synthesis, and uh, I was thinking about um, humanity as a whole is um, about to take the first initiation, uh, which means we are about to um, um, form the buddhic um, body for the uh, whole of humanity. Uh, humanity. And th this means um, the cosmic, the uh, physical uh, plane, um, the etheric uh, body for the uh, humanity. And the, this could explain why we are sort of shifting consciousness to become more uh, thinking about um, synthesis of, of the whole world. It was just some thought I had. Thank you. I also see another comment here as well um, from Josette saying, perhaps to create a new world with new patterns, we have to change and reverse our consciousness and um, the earth and its resources does not belong to us. We belong to the earth and we are part of this living organism. For me, that was one of the most um, impressive uh, take out from the yesterday seminar it was that to think about ourselves as a resource I think it's a big shift in consciousness if we accept that concept I recall in the 60s we used to say we are the earth becoming conscious of itself Mm -hmm. so there's such a beautiful energy settled energy that 
has come through the sharing in a real synthesis um, and regretfully we probably need to close soon because people will need to go and do things I'm sure. Alexander did you want to um, yes. introduce the next goal and yes um, I mentioned at the beginning that we um, experimenting with changing the format of the webinar and so you see today's webinars structured differently but it's not only that um, we suggest to um, enhance our meditation by bringing the focus to the next goal that will be in our uh, review and in our meditative focus in the next month under the sign of Sagittarius starting from this moment that's what as we approach the Sagittarius cycle we will start bringing the focus to the next goal goal 10 reduced inequalities and so throughout this month we invite you uh, whenever your time and your daily processes allow you to just bring your thoughts to that goal maybe to read something maybe reflect or maybe to get some inspiration that you could share with others uh, and therefore start building meditative focus towards the group meditation we will have during the next new moon webinar that will be on December 9th and uh, that way we will come through the cycle building up the energy to the full moon in Sagittarius we will get the impulse of the higher interlude of the month and then we will start grounding that energy towards the new moons and when we will get together again to meditate on the goal 10 and we definitely will invite you to do that the next focalizers the next triangle who will focalize this goal but if you're interested to join this experiment, please uh, uh, let's do it together. So that's a um, new thing that we suggest to do. Yes. Yes, yes, Martha. In support of that wonderful plan, and um, I want to say how along with the rest of what's been said before, how much we work together to build a thought form. It's very important. It occurred to me that the upcoming goal 10, which is about uh, promoting equality, is a very rich and complex goal. And the background to that was that um, it was considered the least quantifiable in terms of measurement, because it struck at the heart of the uh, mandate for countries to really implement what's already present in the charter, which is that regardless of the size of your country, the vo voice is equal to uh, other voices that might be contributing more money or uh, been credited with founding the UN. So um, I think that there are, I'm putting out a call to those who would like to step into the space of uh, planning the next triangle. Uh, it will be such a joy to be working with two other people. So perhaps even before we leave, two people can offer themselves and. Uh, see what happens in building the relationship we have with each other with this new form uh, and continue to create a link between the stated form of the goals and the spirit behind them which is what we're doing that's a wonderful idea absolutely Marta will be one of the members on this triangle who will be focalizing this goal so if you are interested to join Marta in building that meditative focus please let us know either now as Marta suggested or within the next few days um, 
that would be a wonderful unfoldment for this group process. Um, Darcy just wrote that she will participate. Thank you, Darcy. Thank you. So um, we would need one more person for that. So if you're interested, let us know. And uh, uh, before we um, close the meeting today, uh, there's one more uh, comment that I will read. Uh, just I will post it for everyone to read. Uh, it's from Helen. Thank you all for your work. And I would like to offer a valuable site for good scientific news out of Australia called Future Crunched. Uh, it is so important not to despair, but to facilitate dissemination of positive news. Absolutely. And uh, I forgot to mention that uh, in the control panel, in the handout section, you can uh, download a file that Maria Cristina prepared with the resources for the goal 15 that we reviewed today. Thank you, Maria Cristina. So it's there for uh, your review and you can add this site that Helen just mentioned. And our next webinar will be on November 21st uh, in 10 days. Um, it will be solar festival webinar under the sign of Sagittarius. And together we will focus uh, on the seed group of educators in the new age, uh, together with Alice and Rudolf Schneider from Switzerland. So please join us and uh, Let's be connected. And thank you, everyone, for joining today. Namaste.